Hello everybody, welcome to the Gammon live stream number 150. Yeah, today we play another round in the Stream Gems League. Uh, for me it's my fourth match. And today I will play the famous and awesome Nick Blasier. So he is not only famous and awesome in general, but he's also read, leading this uh, wonderful uh, tournament table, which was created by uh, Dennis. Thanks, Dennis, for doing that. Uh, Dennis Mikhailov. And as you can see, uh, Nick has already played three matches as I, but he has won every single one of them so he has won against john giorgio and he has won against james mcnaughton awesome james who is doing all the work here behind the scene the scenes that this uh, which makes this stream champs league possible and he has won against uh, another famous streamer John Lazaro Zana. And I myself, I played the first round against uh, John, which was uh, not only that I lost the match, but it was, uh, yeah. You never enjoy to see that you play uh, PR double than your average. So I started with, uh, it was more than double, it started with a 12. And this, yeah. So it was no wonder that I lost. And the second round I played against uh, Hanna Polyakova. At least I was able to cut my PR in half. I played a six, which still is above my average. So I'm not too happy. And I won the match, so it was fine. So it's all. not only about PR, winning is also fun, I think. And the third round I played against my good buddy, Dirk Schiemann who is very successful in this stream league. So yeah, he is, uh, I don't want to offend anybody here, uh, my colleagues, but he is by far, by far the best player here in this league. And so no surprise because he's one of the very top players in the world. So it's no wonder that he's the big favorite PR favorite here but he managed to lose all his four matches which is kind of funny but he is playing very good so he's on a very good way to the next level uh, I guess we will hear some news in the next few months from him and uh, yeah in this match I was able to almost cut my PR in half again I played a three which is uh, of course I'm very happy with so if I want to keep to keep this uh, thing going, I have to play a 1.5 today. <laughs> so no, um, I'm always happy if I play before below my average, which is around 5.0. So let's see what happens today. I hope I get some easy decisions so I can at least pretend to be a good player and give the simulation of a good player. Yeah. Okay, then uh, greetings into to the chat. So there's Dennis. Hi, Dennis. I was most creating this nice uh, table, uh, updating it all the time. And of course, also playing here in this league. And uh, we have uh, John Giorgio. Hi, John, who killed me in the first round. And we have John. Good morning. Hi, John. And um, we have Wolfgang. Hello, Wolfgang. Schönen guten Abend. And we have Nora Reins. Danke fürs Daumen drücken. And we have Jürgen Kunkel. Hallo, Jürgen. And we have Paul McKenna in the chat. Thanks, Paul. Good to have you here. So we will at at uh, 7 p.m. here at Central Europe p.m. time, so in 10 minutes. Uh, Nick will join me here via Zoom and we will have a very short uh, chat. 
and then we will play um, a seven point match for the Stream Leaks event. And of course, uh, uh, Nick will uh, record this match as well, and he's doing it a little bit different. I'm, as you know, I'm always doing everything live, which has advantages and disadvantages. May it, main advantage for me is that I'm able to to interact with my viewers via chat, and I think this is always a great pleasure, and that's why I love to do it uh, live. But of course, uh, when you later watch uh, Nick's video, you have the great big advantage that you will see the the XG uh, while while watching the match you will see the XG feed which is always nice that you can directly uh, compare uh, what was Nick saying while not knowing the XG data and uh, yeah that's a different experience so I would highly recommend of course to as I always do to watch the the stream or the video of my opponent as well I guess it will be up and running on his uh, channel uh, very soon. Okay, so that's it. Maybe I want to give you a very short update. I think people who are following me on Facebook already know what's what's very uh, important and exciting for me the last few weeks. It's uh, about my latest uh, improvement uh, in the Anki area, so I will briefly show you what I have done. So you see here in Anki, which are my digital flashcards, you have all kinds of decks and I have created some new decks, early match cubes, which uses a very new feature, which I think is really the biggest improvement since I started with Anki. Um, you see, as usual, you get your your uh, gammon position here and um, since uh, this is a card which uh, also contains this new feature which is called uh, uh, score matrix which means you get all the xg plus plus results for all scores in a seven point match so that's why you have here this additional question not only uh, for money or for a neutral score what would you do here I guess most of the more experienced play, uh, uh, players know the answer to this uh, position for a neutral score. You know that after a typical double five blitz, if there's one on the bar and the other checker is deep on the 23, it's just just not a double. If the, the checker on the 23 here would be on the 21 or 20 point, it would be just a small double. And if it would be on the bar point, so exposed to a double shot with sixes and aces, it would be a small drop. But the big question is, most of the time we, or at least I, I don't play a money game. I play always play uh, tournament games, matches. So where, that's why this extra question here, at which scores would you deviate? So you can think about it and sooner or later we, you will go on um, show answer and there you see this nice uh, this nice extra uh, score matrix here where you see for each score which is the correct uh, uh, cube action um, so we have blue for no double take we have uh, green for double take and yellow for double pass and red for no double pass so too good to double so you see here um, um, that, and if you go down a little bit, you see the, the normal results for, for a money game. So here you can easily see that it's just just on the border to to um, to a double. So just a very small, no double, no big issue. So and then you can can uh, yeah easily see here in the table where it will change and. Um, for example, you see that it's a huge difference here. You will very often see this, uh, which I call triangle, the three away, two away, four away, two away, and four away, three away. Um, there, even though it's at a normal score, it's uh, even though very small, but still no double. At these scores, it's a huge mistake not to double, and it's even, oh, uh, at least at four away, two away, and at 4 away, 3 away, a huge blunder here to take 
which is normally an easy take and even a no double. And yeah, and the good thing is you can also all, always uh, just click on a, on a cell here. For example, I click now on the cell 4 away, 2 away. And then uh, you see in a small pop-up the, all the important information. So you see the take point for the, for the taker and uh, the gammon values. Yeah? And here you see, for example, take point is 20%, but the big issue is that the gammon value of the doubler is on the two cube is very high at, at uh, 1.0 instead of the usual 0.5. So this is then after doubling, it's, uh, it's, uh, we are in a game and go situation. And for example, if I click another, let's, let's just uh, click on, uh, let's say here, uh, whatever, seven away, six away, you have some more information. You also, if it's uh, relevant, you will see here the take point if the game turns around and the, the taker doubles back and you see the take point here. And sometimes you have two take points, which is the first one is always the so-called long race take point, the live take point, or a version of the live take point, which is, as the name says, says in the, in the long race. And the other one is the last roll or basic pick. Uh, take point. So this long race differs a little bit from the live take point that XG gives us, which is a little bit dubious in value, I would say. Um, yeah, so you can easily see that you can uh, improve very fast your tournament skill on this way, because uh, yeah, you have the position you can study, and you have um, on, on one on one card you have all the results and, and not only if it's a double or take or whatever it is but also the size which uh, if you do this regularly you get uh, i'm pretty sure you will improve your tournament skill or tournament tactics or adjustments will improve uh, tremendously yes yeah, so that's it well, that's what i was doing the last few weeks and improving and uh, yeah, there are two decks available, which I call early match cubes. So uh, very early in the match, uh, often also situations where it's not a double in a, in a normal situation, but maybe already a double in some of these very scores where very aggressive action is uh, is called for. And uh, yeah, these decks go to 25 uh, cards each, and each deck is. Uh, nine euros so if you're interested just send me a message the email you see on top of the screen so i think for 18 euros you get 50 of these cards where you can start studying this tournament stuff and uh, yeah of course you can get out this data you can also get it out from other sources but here you have all in on in one place and i think it's yeah it's not just because um, uh, i want to sell this stuff it's really as you guys probably know that I'm looking for training methods for myself because I'm mainly I'm focused on uh, trimming my PR down so I'm always looking for new methods and uh, yeah more or less I will optimize this for myself and then yeah why not share it and uh, a lot of stuff is is for free when you go to my website xg2anki.de uh, yeah, there's a lot of free stuff and uh, yeah, and for the real freaks you can buy some extra stuff. Okay, so I guess that uh, Nick will join me pretty soon. Then we have our short chat before we start our, our match. So I think after I created the chat Herbert joined, so Herbert, guten Abend nach München. Nice to have you here. So, let's see if uh, Nick is on time. Then I guess I will switch here to the chatting scene. And let's see if Nick will join.
Yeah, so I hope we will get a nice backgammon evening here. And as you know, after the match, even though I know that most of the viewers are mainly interested in the match and who is winning, so if I look at the statistics, I always see that the, that the number of viewers usually drop down after the match is over because most of the people are not very much interested in the analyzing, which of course for me is the most fun, especially if I played well. If I played not so good, it's more or less a torture, but of course it's very important to to uh, analyze your blunders to be able to prevent them next time. So, Nick is here in the waiting room, so let me let me let him in. Well, hello. Hi, Nick. I just have to put you on the screen. Give me just a second. <laughs> no, no, it's as always something, as we know. Okay. Sweet. So, you're looking good, buddy. How are you doing? Hey, it's good to see you, man. <laughs> I've been doing all right. Still playing a little bit of backgammon here and there. <laughs> so you still have time to, to play backgammon because you yes, also have yes. this new book project, or oh, haven't you? Or did I mix yeah, something? Yeah, I've been working on that here and there. It's been a little bit since I've put like serious work into it. I'm like starting a new job pretty soon too. So I don't know. I have no idea when I'm going to finish that. <laughs> oh, so you still have to work. The job, you mean a real job, not, nothing to do with backgammon. <laughs> right, So right. earning the money job. the tra traditional way. Right, right. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. I've been thinking about that, though. I have all the, like, the new book should be on all the opening match cubes in the third roll. Like, after you win the opening roll, your opponent rolls, and mm -hmm. you have a cube at four-way, two-way, and stuff like that. So I, of course, have all the positions together. So I guess I, I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to just send those all to you and we'll have some Anki decks and then maybe there'll be a book someday. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we have some duplication because I, I sampled some, some positions from the very early matches. So I'm pretty sure uh, you may have uh, picked some of them, of course, because uh, the, yeah. the amount of positions after three balls is quite, yeah, still, yeah, whatever. Uh, for example, I had something like 3-4 split and then 4-2 and dance and things like that, so which are clearly too early for normal scores. But mm -hmm, they are mm -hmm. scores where they are already in business then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I <clears throat> I mean, I went through and did all of them. That's So I should have everything you can think of <laughs> <laughs> was the idea. I mean, Wow, so a real compendium. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think you needed to see everything like... Obviously, there's somewhere if you, if you, I don't know, do something and a particular response is not a cube and something clearly, I don't know. There are a lot of them that I didn't, you slot and you get hit. You're probably losing after that, right? So maybe I don't need to put that in the book. <laughs> but, but things like this, yeah. Anywhere you'd even have like a doubt. I, I kind of like that should be close in some way. And there's some good surprises in there. I kind of like when the... When the second roll response isn't clear and you don't know exactly what the follow-up should be with mm -hmm. that particular sequence, I tried to put like the checker plays in there sometimes too, and there's some real interesting ones in there too. So, oh, wow. yeah, it should be everything. So how, how many positions? There must be uh, hundreds. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But it like I think it also can't be as many as the second roll, more or less. You know, like there's like, I mean, it's almost like. Like if you took the second roll project and just immediately cut out half of those because you're obviously losing, yep. right? So it's got to be like at best half as many as that <laughs> at most. But I don't, I don't know. I haven't counted it. I have a whole bunch of different director, directories on it. But uh, maybe 100 isn't too bad. I think actually if I pull up the document, I wonder, I think it's gearing up. Maybe it's going to be like 60 pages of just positions and I can get about four positions on a page. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe one to 200. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> cool. So when yeah, will it yeah. be available around? I, I don't know. Maybe never. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> it's just very difficult to like, I mean, it sounds very silly, but it's actually like a huge pain to take each of these positions and put them into a Word document and like think about the order and all this stuff. And then like I'm nearing that part and then I'm going to actually write with it, which is a relatively easy piece for me. But then I still feel like like that's half of the book that I want to make. I'd also like to take all the fourth roll normal score cubes mm -hmm. and just get those in there as well. It just fits nicely together. And then like at that point, I don't like, you know, everything about the cube in the opening, right? There's not a whole lot left to think about. <laughs> so, <laughs> not that I expect people to memorize it, but you've seen it all, right? Yep. And then like you have an idea of when to think about it and when not. So I, if I decided to just publish like that first half on its own, like maybe I'm actually kind of close to, I could finish that in the near term, yeah. but I yeah. think I'm, I think I'm half done. <laughs> so, I think so. so I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay. I'm looking forward to it. For yeah, sure. yeah. 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 It's fun to work on. It's informative and it just like, yeah, sometimes I get in big bursts of working on it and then sometimes other things come up and it seems like I'll never finish it. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's, it's difficult in a very different way than the last book was. The last one I like, very easy to come up with the positions. I I just screenshotted them in there and that was like a little bit easier, but I think like the quality of the image is just a little bit worse. So I'm trying to work with the XG font. So mm -hmm. it's like so right now. <laughs> but if it, hopefully someone's curious about how all this stuff works, you know? Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to do it a little bit different and it's like not a lot harder, but then when you multiply it across whatever it is, 200 positions, we'll say, in the last book, I don't. I guess you would know probably better than me how many positions I sent you <laughs> for that book. But probably like uh, 100 at the most. I don't know. I think we had, uh, I think 400 cards or something like that, huh? For well, the 400 cards. Am I so? I did not think it... <laughs> Am I so off? Uh... Well, actually, that could be. It could be a hundred positions, and like. And then the different scores. Yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it. Yeah. I don't know. It just feels like I'm pasting a lot more positions in this one. It seems like more positions. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Ah, I saw it. I saw it now. It's the Anki cards are four hundred fifty-six. Yeah, but of course wow. these are duplicate. These are not positions. These are situations. Yeah. yeah if uh, I think yeah, we, yeah. we often had five, five or so uh, uh, additional scores. Huh? So I yeah, think we have yeah. maybe so divided was... by five or six, and then we have the real positions. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like maybe a step or two less for each position to just like screenshot and paste it in there. And I'm mm. doing it like the right way that should look nicer and utilize actual font. Um, and it just takes enough longer times hundreds of positions to be like a lot slower. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the good thing is if we do an Anki deck together again, we only need one position and then we have all the scores automatically yeah? because we have this uh, oh, nice uh, score matrix for the seven point match. You have all on, on yeah. one view. Well, the other nice part about it too, I guess that'll be really nice for the fourth roll ones for sure, just in case you want to look at it. Um, but uh, uh, most cubes on the on the third roll actually only happen at four way, two way. And there's like a few three way, two way exceptions. And I think zero at four away, three away, where it's correct to send it. So that's a nice mm, tip. There may be some surprises for you. <laughs> yeah. I have not gone through it. I think I have zero. <laughs> okay. And what about your tournaments you're going to this year? Do you still have time to, to visit uh, tournaments? Of no, course, I'm, I'm mainly really... interested if you're coming to Europe, for example, to ah, Stockholm. I see. For the... No, I don't have any plans to come to any of the tournaments yet, unfortunately. Um, what uh, I haven't, last tournaments I did commentary on were like back in October. I'm talking about maybe being involved in the Cherry Blossom, but it's just tough, like starting a new job. I don't know if I'll be able mm -hmm. to make it out there or not. Uh, so Washington, D.C., maybe in the end of April, if I can make it happen. But uh, yeah, that's a cool, I've been working a couple tournaments with, with Jason Blunderblots. Yeah, uh, cool. On YouTube huh? channel. And Ben kind of producing it, that team of, uh, yeah, yeah, like, uh, oh, I'm for, like forgetting all the names. I remember, it. Why, why do I always blank on his name? Andy <laughs> and Jeb's son. <laughs> but we've got like a whole, like we've done a couple of tournaments together and I really like with the added videos that Jason's doing and stuff. And I think it's something very new and cool. Huh. So like I try to prioritize being involved in 
in those tournaments where I can. So maybe that means I'll get out to Jamaica again. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. But but yeah, that's kind of where my head's at with it. And I haven't thought about any of the other international ones or any like awesome Arda tournaments or anything like that in a while. So someone was asking me recently though, which what the good ones are. Mm-hmm. I, if I got my chance to just go on a vacation somewhere, I think I'd love to get, uh, I would have loved to be at Lou Rocky, the, the Greece tournament. I've never been to Greece, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to go there uh, as well, yeah. At some point, yeah. yeah, I think it is very nice. Yeah. What about you? You got a real full playing schedule with all your study and everything? No, I'm I'm really studying a lot, and uh, for me, I think I will play two tournaments in Stockholm. Unfortunately, okay. unfortunately, I did not qualify for the the German team this time because me, yeah. You can say I'm too weak, but the other reason is we have so many super strong players. For example, Mario yeah, Kühl joined strong. the team, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a different league, and Marcus Reinhardt is back, so there's, yeah. I have a lot to practice to catch up and, and, and to get into this league. So, but I will still go yeah. to St- uh, Stockholm because there's also a nice open, and maybe maybe if someone catches a cold from my team, I can jump in at last point. <laughs> There you go. You just got to travel there as an alternate. You never know what might happen, right? And of course, we have this huge tournament in Aachen in August, 10th to 16th in, in August, the Begemmen Festival, first Begemmen Festival. Oh, cool. There will be the first uh, 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 doubles uh, world championship by. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, okay. W- I haven't heard about that. Yeah. So that sounds be- like a lot of fun. Yeah. This is a huge, huge tournament. Uh, so seven days, complete week. Wow. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we hope that. Well, Marcus, Marcus is the main, uh, main organizer. Of course, he hopes that many people will come after Monte Carlo or after Stockholm. And then in ah, August, okay. This is, uh, yeah, so. I remember Marcus talking about that tournament a little bit. He was asking me about it, I think, in some planning stages, and it sounds like a really cool idea. You know? Yeah. So. Excited to see how they, that works they do out. a lot of cool stuff. So we had the first BMAB, BMAB tournament last year in Germany, and yeah. uh, they organized organized uh, his friend Jürgen Schettler, the president of the German Begemmen Federation, and Markus. They did this, and now they do the uh, Begemmen Festival in Aachen. Uh, wow! Yeah, it will be huge, and uh, we have lectures there and all this stuff. So it will be. Will we will be very cool, I think. <laughs> awesome. We'll see if I can get some vacation in around then. Maybe I'll make my way out there. I haven't been to Germany in a while. <laughs> okay. And yeah, final word. What about uh, stream gems? What do you think about this uh, event? Yeah, it's been super fun. I like. I mean, one of my. It seems like. One of my favorite like videos to make for my channel is like the play and explains with the WBIF individual championship and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, adding the XG feed after it. It's um, every one of those videos are like a little bit hard work, but they're not too bad to just rewatch the video and add the XG feed, you know, but it's always twice as long as a match. But they're like relatively simple and I like can just take like chalk it up to studying and I get to review my match that way, you know, and it seems like people really like those and and learn a lot from them, you know, like a lot of people reach out saying it's just very helpful to get that like in the moment thought process about it. And yeah. it's kind of fun too, right? Because there's like a yeah. sweat with it. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> So like when the when the individual championships end, it's like I, I hate just having like a break. I don't really I'm not playing in anything else online or something. So it's really nice to have like another one to keep being able to do those. You know, yeah. I'm always looking for excuses to keep those going. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it's just been nice to have like matches to play and and reasons to do more playing. Explains they've been fun. Yeah, and it's not running too bad for you in the stream champs. You are the the lonely right. leader with three victories. It's more fun when you win every time. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> playing good is is fun, but winning is uh, also has its, its, its advantages. <laughs> let's say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of discussion of like the buying the the high end dice on Galaxy, right? But no one talks about like Terrier's very nice dice. I, I mean, they've been great through the individual <laughs> championships and stuff like that. I mean, I think I have in those tournaments some like it's probably like seventy five percent or more win rate which is ridiculous like well. i'm not that's not what i'm supposed to win <laughs> but, <laughs> but i've been very lucky on the online stuff so it's it's fun i, I like 
Makes it fun to play for sure. <laughs> yeah, we all know at the end it will even out, but uh, it's always oh, nice to have not. such a nice streak. <laughs> and, uh... I don't know that. I don't believe that. Yet. <laughs> I <laughs> okay, I think the first viewers are all already complaining that we are talking too much and not playing. So maybe oh, let's... perfect. Let's talk some more then. <laughs> <laughs> I like your attitude. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. All right. Well, I'll have to fire up my OBS. That'll take me like a minute or two, but I'll, I should be in Heroes already and okay. we'll just start soon. All right. Okay. So we, cool. you, you, uh, you will quit uh, Zoom now and we just play and. Yeah. yeah. Does that sound good? That's yeah, yeah. what I was thinking. Perfect. Was thinking okay. Cool. Perfect. All right. Okay. Then uh, I wish we'll you good you luck, soon. good match, and uh, I will watch your yeah. video as well. Good luck to you too. And good okay. Luck to you. I, I, I mean, I shouldn't say good luck. I don't mean it. Nah, we should. <laughs> good yeah. luck to me. <laughs> Let's say good match. <laughs> good match. Is there you go. That's the nice thing. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. I will enjoy my loss. Yeah. Right. <laughs> see you soon. Okay. See you. Bye bye, Nick. Okay. Bye. We will very soon start. Let me switch this. And let's check. I guess Nick will need a few more minutes. Hi, Patrick. Good to see that you made it after the work to be here just in time. And so we will start very soon. I will check on heroes. So Nick is already there. And he's inviting me already. So there we start. I hope you have some fun. So, 6 4 should not be too hard to point here. And I'm already at the disadvantage, so I have to split you because opponent has an advanced anger, I have to fight for one as well. So splitting with the ace is not enough, so I'm pretty sure that this is the best move. So we have uh, two minutes per point, so there should be enough time for talking. But still, I usually manage it to get into time trouble while streaming. So in normal matches without streaming, with two minutes per point, uh, yeah, that's more than enough. Uh, but streaming is something different. Often you want to finish a sentence and then you don't press the clock and uh, things like that. So five is clear, six. Uh, yeah, I guess I should just run. The indirects are not so so bad because of Nick's plot in his home board. Well, yeah, other option would have been 13 to 7, but, but then I'm vulnerable, vulnerable on both sides of the boards. Maybe not so such a good idea. So, but I'm behind, that's, that's an issue. And 2 1 does not help too much. So, but I think there's nothing better than playing like that. Stepping up when behind cannot be the right idea, I hope. So I'm really in trouble here. So I'm, Nick is not too far away from, 
form a double. Oh, okay. Stepping up and behind and uh, don't do the attack. I think the best I can do is make this board. It's only five pips. Guess make will double and for only five pips on the three point board. I can attack if you if he runs from the anchor. And I'm relatively safe on the 24 points, so I think I still have a take, but I don't like the double. But I have to take it. Even so, it's very strong. Huh? So the longer I look, so at least practically, if it's not playing for too good, which I don't believe it is. Uh, because I may pass it. If I wait a little bit longer, I may talk myself into a pass. Uh, because he is already the, the advanced anchor. Maybe I'm off completely. I'm talking complete rubbish. So I have to run out and hope for the best, even though I'm not. I'm not really ahead, but staying behind the improving prime cannot be the right idea. So, no, I think it's getting... I could play this, but I give him another number, threes, fours and fives to cover. But the problem is, can I take here? I don't know. Maybe just playing a to two and then passing the double. So he's still not doubling. Was this too good now because of my additional blot? Or am I really so off in my evaluation? Cool. The good thing is if someone made doubling errors until now, it cannot be me. So he was not playing on too good if he thinks now if this is good enough to double. But this is now clearly clearly too good of course. So we have to wait for the XG analyzing later. So now he can double from the roof and I have to pass I think. Playing on for a gammon. It's not I would but I double I play on for gammon way too, not often enough, let's say it that way. So I'm dropping this cube. Still, I can look a little bit into it. But I have this weak board, I cannot contain him easily, and I'm already 13 down, and no anchor, and I need here threes and fours, and then run out. I don't think that I can take this, sorry. I'm a taker, but... Though so this may have been a huge error, of course. I was pretty sure that this was a, a pass, and if it was not, then I have a very interesting Anki card later, because there I can improve a lot if you are off by so... Uh, by such a big amount.
So, trailing. 7 away, 6 away. Always important. So we don't want to go on the 24. Just to, just to make the 11 point. 11 point is not good enough. So we have to enter here and then we can step up. But we are down. Makes no sense. Stepping up to the 10 also makes no sense. So I try the slotting. Big play. Duplicating some force. For one, for two, for six, for example. Hmm, good news is I can cover. I can also make the four point. For one, for two, for six, still duplicated. The other way is a little bit. But I'm already more than 30 pips down, so maybe I have to do more than that. When in doubt, just make the 5. Huh? Yeah, now you see why Nick is leading the, this tournament by 3 to 0 matches. So, tempo hit is not worth much here. He's rolling so fast. 40 pips ahead. 1 and 3. Why not cube this? Just because of the 5 point, this is enough. And he should be even be a little bit more aggressive with cubing at once because he's because of the odd even considerations. So and now I don't know. So he played on for the G before. I don't like this. I think I have to pass again. Maybe I'm too chickenish today. So, 7 away, 5 away. Oh, I should start about thinking, doubling in Germanish positions. A little bit earlier. But first we have to reach a Germanish position. That's the first step. You can't hit back. Now I need an inner board point, like a 5 and 4. And he he's something not so good. And then I'm into the aggressive doubling stuff here, maybe. Five is clear and six as well. It's always nice to have some easy decisions in between, which counts as a decision for the PR, and you most likely don't mess it up. So I need structure now. Structure. This is not structure. I'm ahead in the race, I need structure. Can't get it. But I can save almost anything and keep my keep my builders. Looks good. But still no cube, of course. From now on we can start thinking about cube. We could have started thinking about cubing. Mainly because of the match score. And he already has a that checker on the ace point, which is not so good for his back game uh, future. Yeah, when will I cube this? That's that the big, the big problem. When can I cube that? So do I? Do I need? Do I have market losers? Maybe some big doubles. 
Uh, I think I. Wow. <laughs> That's the anti joke of the day. Very nice. I would like to see John's face when he rolls something like that. Hi, John. <clears throat> okay, let's hope for <laughs> let's hope for a seven. But with my luck, I roll a six one, which is technically a seven. So, but this I can unstack this, and I can unstack this. It's cool. It's a little bit fiddly here without the six point, but. Don't get too nervous, you just have to hit. If he doesn't hit it, it's as good as a point. Oh, I could have made it here. Uh oh, I'm, I'm making too much fun here. So huge oversight. Uh oh. That's it when you're taking it too lightly. I did not see that I could cover it. It was so far away, the checker on the 8. It was... So now... Can I still double? What do I have to make the point? I think I have to make the point again. Huh? Uh oh. So this was at least 300. Not covering the six. Why? This is even more. 400, I guess. So all the PR is gone for today. And uh, yeah, huge, huge racing lead. So I have to, to double this. Well, match score helps quite a bit. Okay, deuces again, which is very nice. And made to six is a good two. I should remember that. So, that's the most important thing is not to think about this double two and focus on the future. So I need fours, fours are here and there. Uh, yeah, I have to prepare to clear the 11 point, I think. So now I'm preparing to clear. Or can we afford to strengthen the board? He has to run, though. Maybe I, I will just strengthen my board. I think this, the double two misplay was the punishment for doing something I usually don't do, which is talking about the opponent's decisions and I did it quite a lot and maybe this was a punishment even though I'm an atheist I still think there may be something that punishes me I know that's not logical but that's the kind of guy I am so we don't give a shot and then Six five could be right to make double six is not so bad because the blood hurts a little bit if he runs with one checker. Even so it looks strange, it may be the right play here, but this technical stuff is always always challenging. Challenging. I have one attack one attacker less if he runs. Cool, I'll try this one. Let's see. Five to lucky roll. Does it make a big difference? 
don't think so. Just to keep everything even, 5 to 3 should be better than 3 to 1. And now we keep it even again, no? Why not? So, clear from the rear. Gammons are no unlikely anyway. And this is safer than creating another gap on the 5. So, taking two off, why not? He's running anyway. <laughs> we all know where this is going, huh? Shitty rolls and a silly decision, huh? Should I... I think I have to play here, huh? I have more than take, t the take two off. How did that happen? Ah, rolling an ace every time, I think that was the reason, almost every time. Ah, a little bit complaining and suddenly the dice get better. So, five away, five away. And here we have to mirror. All other things would be a sizable error. Even though in the on the very first roll, six, four, all, all three options are more or less equal Ta -da, ta -da. Six, two, hit up. a miss so five away five away Ten pips, not enough. So I can safety the plot, which I will most likely do, because just running out. A lot of shots, so why not just play safe? I'm 20 pips ahead, only one checker back, so I have all good reasons to play safe if it's not getting too ugly. Uh, didn't I cover my six point lot with the double two? Can't believe it. So long distance shots, they are easy to overlook, one should think. Huh? But what's going on in the brain if you can't, do not recognize that you can, with a two from eight to six, you can cover the plot. What happens in the brain? Would really be interesting to find some some kind of explanation. So very strong board, I cannot do anything, but I'm ahead, so I will step up. Better than yeah, eight to six is uh, this time is too too safe, I would say, too ugly. I still need structure. And I cannot start playing like that. I need structure, otherwise my pip count lead is not worth too much. And the two point is not enough structure by far to get into doubling territory. So I would step up, but then I have an ugly ace. So if I enter with with the one, maybe not like that, like that. Then six to two is six to two. Can can you win a game like that if you play six to two with your form? Uh, 
Maybe. But the idea is if I blunder, it should look at least should look nice. And 6-2 was not looking nice. So but when I head in the race and only one checker back, they are at least if you want to copy the XG style, if you're an XG believer, then very often you have to make really ugly plays like that. But here's a four and he has to give up his advanced, it's more advanced anchor to, to hit. Um, so now I can again. So, what to do now? I don't like to enter on the 23 because I'm blocked here on the sixes. This is definitely a candidate. I would, I would like to enter here, but then how do I play the two? I have to expose another blot or play eight to six. If I play the eight to six, no, no I cannot do that. Uh, I don't want to give a double shot here, twos and sixes and fours and fives over there. Yeah, I think I have to do the ugly stuff. For one, so hitting six one makes no sense. So I guess I just have to run, or I play thirteen to eight. But I'm far ahead. I have to run. I cannot wait for a perfect roll, so I have to run. Pretty sure. Even though. 24 number sits with aces and sixes. But the good thing is he has to give up something. He does not want to give up at this point, which is the eight point and the, his midpoint. So I'm pretty sure that running out to the opponent's bar point was the best play by far. Okay, three is easy and five, you can again hit. Do I need a tempo hit? No, he's not threatening too much, so why give him? And I cannot blitz, so 13 to eight should be clear. So, hitting would be a good idea, or just running out and saying goodbye. But still, my structure worries me a lot. But now I have other things to worry me. The race lead has gone. And, and I'm lost for point board. So I only have the two point. I'm outboard completely, so it should be a monster, monster drop, I think. Five, three makes the three. Should be easy. So he's four away and I'm five away, which is not so good for different reasons. He's in a better doubling position and he's leading. So So I have a higher take point than one might expect. Because he's threatening to win the match with a gammon 
after a double and to get to another good even score at two away. So my tail point is quite high. I will predict very soon a double pass. Even though, of course, I'm hoping that I will survive this. But the most likely event would be that this game ends with a double pass in the next two or three turns. I desperately need an anchor. Or at least an ace that I can make my five point, but if he runs later on, at least not an easy decision. Uh oh, that's no anchor and no enter. 30 pips. Yeah, this is exactly these kinds of positions that maybe you take normally, but here I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that I have to give up here. If I had the 5 point, maybe, but with the 3 on the plot, I will drop this. So, let's fight now. Problem of course is that you, if you're analyzing this, all this math score stuff heavily, like I do at the moment, that you maybe tend to over adjust your play just to to use some of your new new learned toys but that's the way it goes go up and down but at the end i think you go up in playing strength or down in pr so what can i do here i have to hit something i can make no point to make the 22 anchor. I have to do some kind of hitting. I can do this combined with a split. Or I could do this. Slightly better point structure. But still the glued back trackers. Huh? Not an easy one. <sighs> of course, 10 jackers in the zone, I have to anchor up. I would like to make the 8 point, but it's just asking for trouble. So I'm just anchoring and Saving the blot. I don't see much else. Yeah, this definitely helps. I'm ahead in the race now, which means I'm just playing contact minimizing. Making the bar point makes no sense, I think. 10 point is quite nice because it it helps to make the four point, but still out of direct range. So 13 points and I'm down 
But the thing is that in, in gamblerless positions you can take more, so I don't think that I have a cube here. The leader can, can take more in these gamblerless positions. So I guess I will just slot my four. Where else should I play? Two down is too much. Looks good to me. Yeah, unfortunately, my race lead has gone. So I'm miles away from doubling. Oh, not much difference, I think. I may get problems here. Huh? Will you make? Oh, what's played like that? Should not make too big a difference. He will not give a shot uh, deliberately, so I don't need my board now. He will not give a shot just because I have a blood in my own board. That's what I wanted to say. So it's better to be flexible in the outside. Oh, I will never get ahead in the race with rolls like that. So. How will I play the next 2-1? I think now I make my 4 point with the next 2-1. Deuces, deuces. What can go wrong with deuces? Pretty hard. So I would like to stay in contact, but if I want to stay in contact, I have to watch on my board here. So I think I have to make two crossovers, but since I'm still down, I'm not making the nine. I do something like that instead. Hi Marcel, guten Abend. I need biggies. So what? Now I'm eight ahead, so I had to. I should reduce contact. I could make two crossovers, but it's way harder to clear. So one less crossover, but way more flexible. Yeah. Thank. This should be it. But, of course, I need to make improvement in the pip count area. Six ahead, so slightly ahead. Yeah. Killer. He's a killer. So, three pips and the gap. And I have one extra tracker. But the fives are really bad for me because I have already two on the ace point. I would have doubled. I would have doubled on his shoes. So I start now arguing with Nick and then. We all know what happened last time when I was so arrogant. So, six, seven cannot be anything. I need more, not less than usual for a double here in a non germanish position. That's very important to know. has a three roll position with a uh, gap on the three. I have a one, two, three, four roll. So 
if he fails if he take if he doesn't fail Again, I think this is not a super clear take here. Double aces are not working for me, which is an issue as well. No. One, two, three, four. When he has a full roll, I need a. Plus the chance that he, he will bear off in three rolls. The score also is an issue. Okay, I will blunder again and will drop this, I think. Okay, five away, two away. Again, in case I get in Germanish positions, I should double earlier, otherwise I should be very careful and double late because he has a very low doubling point of 17.5% only with gems I can play aggressively so after double five you usually should not split and since advancing to the 10 point is too weak I have to slot I'm pretty sure yeah but if I need a little bit more dice power to put him a little bit under pressure, at least. I don't want to give up so easily. Even though I messed up my double deuces. I still can't believe it. it did not come off from 8 to 6. Ah, maybe it was a thing like uh, Bernard told me, Bernard Meyer, that sometimes he has trouble when in checker plays because he's counting the bar as a, as a field. Maybe that was my issue here. Now I have a good explanation. Now I have a good explanation. So ace should be clear. And since I'm behind, I'm not stepping up. I try to play a priming game. On the, what else? The builders. That's perfect. Perfect. And if I advance, he can just blitz me and run an undoubled gammon and finish uh, the, the match. So I'm pretty sure that this 3-1 was the best choice. Oh, what can I do? Can I build a point? No, hitting is pointless. So I'm just running. Even so, a lot of shots, but these plots are pretty good covered here. So I'm uh, pretty sure that running out is the best. If he hits me on my 11 or 10, I get quite a few return shots. If he hits on the 9, of course, best is if he would not hit at all, like with the 6-2. So, do I have enough gammon potential here? I'm pretty sure I do. So I have to cube at this score. Uh, because if I hit here, and he dances. That's still a super strong prime here. There's not so many attackers. Cool. Is this a double at this score? Yeah, 
Yeah, let's see what happens. Cannot be too bad at that score. But to be honest, I don't know. I don't know, but I don't want to get repeating errors. If I don't double, which can easily happen. Good question. Is have I lost the market now at this score? Huh? Maybe not so. And that's the reason why the double was maybe not so super cool. But uh, to be honest, I'm really looking to get the cube out of my way and double at the earliest possible situation. But maybe I overdid it here. And the chance that Nick will pass this, I would have estimated at below 1%. So that was definitely not an argument. Anyway, we just win a gammon and make it a little bit more interesting. Huh? Hmm. Nick is a fighter. He's a real fighter. And what I am, am I? Can be 10 to 4, 30 to 7, or I just run out. Uh oh. Or heat. Boah, huge blunder potential, I would say. I think this is definitely a candidate. Huh? Bring more, 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 more ammunition, more uh, ammunition, and hope to attack later. Because this uh, cannot work, I think. Sure, if he dances, it can hit. But I still need a hit with a 6. No, I don't think that this is right. And running out? No. And slotting the bar? No. Let's play with one blot. Not an easy one. So, 6-4 is blocked here now. This will not work. This is not so nice as well, but I think I have nothing better. And still some minor time issues with two and a half minutes. We may see a few more games. So now I can do something. He has two blots. I don't have to play super safe like that. Guess I can do something more, more aggressive maybe. Yeah. But why not just play simple? Just because of the blots, still hurts if he hits, because you have such a strong priming structure. Yeah, and I need more games to be able to catch up my PR. But so giving the uh, up the anchors no option, giving up the eight point the blocking structure. I don't think so. So just just giving the four six. Oh. Yeah, good question. If he stays back, is it to his advantage? Mm. 
Interesting decision. But this would be my play. But it feels like we have to look for something more clever. But especially for this match score. Well, I would just play simple. Even though technically he's not ahead of the racer. With me being down three pips and on roll. Of course this pays off if I can't jump. Which I would, it would work out the other way. Okie dokie. It may be the last game of this match. Six five. Running is not an option, so I just make my board. And then let's hope for a big double now for me. This is the perfect big double. So it does not look very rosy for me. He is killing me. He's killing me. But how? It's only so far ahead, so maybe just playing eight to three without hitting. I don't think that making the four point is right, huh? He's seven twelve fifths ahead in the race. And if I get an ace, I still have some time. <sighs> Ten pips to play to roll a six. Hmm. Not an easy one. I would play a two three, I'm just saying, but I don't have to think so deep because it's not my decision, so it's easily it's easy to say that. So I need a sexy. Don't get a six. I need a sexy, sexy, sexy. There it is. One, two, three, four. Nope. No luck for Rhino. Doing, doing. Still have some chances. Chances. But now it's getting it's getting pretty dark. Ha ha! What a nice ace. Okay. going on here <laughs> one two three four funny the dice gods have some humor I think and now double six and then I can win a game I can still win a game no he has two checkers off okay okay that was far too optimistic to think that I can still win a game But I have some chances. I have some chances. But I think I cannot keep my anchor for very long.
So, what's going on here? Twos and fives. Sixes, that's too much. So, must be pretty clear that that's the best one. Yeah, if I would have survived this one, I would have felt quite optimistic, but now I'm back in deep trouble again. Okay, I give up. I give up. Okay, so much for that. Let's see what else went wrong. Oh, what's here? <laughs> One, two. this be right? Oh man. No clue at all, to be honest. But I thought I need more contact, but Usually it's not good to give direct shots in containments, but... So, go runner go, says Ute. Hi Ute, yeah, it's a little bit difficult. best and I'm not rolling my best and uh, can only go to bed here yes you are right you are right okay Not even the gammon I saved. So, but the good news is if I played a 4.5 with this oversight, uh, I think the rest was not too bad. So, let's do some analyzing. And here, I will import it in XG and then. We will talk about what happened here. Let me just give a few seconds to import the match file. Of course, this is another little drawback if you're doing this live. You have some, some time to kill until the analyzing is ready. So there must come a huge jump here when I had this oversight with the... Uh, this was 394, this was the double two where I overlooked the, the cover from 8 to 6. It was so difficult to see. Really annoying. Really annoying. Okay, let's quit here, heroes, and then we see what happens.
yeah, we will analyze the match now. As you know, as usual, I take my time. So Nick killed me in DPR, at least according to uh, XG+. And let's go through the match. So six four, yeah, this was was clear. Anything else, yeah, running would have been a huge blunder. Not that I thought about it, but always good to know. Making the twenty, let's use the arrows. So I will go through the whole match, like it or not, and we will analyze the interesting stuff. So three two. This is a typical, a typical thing. There's an absolutely normal play here. Thirteen ten to six two. Six two four. But the thing is that you have this advanced anchor, and um, you are more inclined to play safe. And it's not as um, the great Paul McGreal told us that's what was one of the things he was a little bit off is in his bold versus safe criteria he said that an advanced anger allows you or give you permission to play more bold and the bots told us uh, that uh, what was what's also written in in Michi's uh, backtracker strategy that I mean, when you have an advanced anchor it's more an indicator that that uh, safe plays get more attractive and six the double hit here is, uh, yeah, it looks like a blitz play, but it's uh, just the safest play because it just gives uh, 11 shots. Yeah. And if you play this uh, normal play with uh, fighting for the best points, giving a six to cover, blah, 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 but it's just, yeah, just because um, you have this advanced anchor. Yeah. You can, you could easily uh, verify this and uh, modify the position a little bit and I'm pretty sure that it looks a little bit different if we put the trackers um, back on the ace point you see at least you see that it's getting uh, way closer yeah. it's interesting I would not have guessed that to be honest but still, yeah. uh, you have the weaker board, huh? so you still look for the best player. But you see that the the natural or nice looking play 13, 10, 6, 4 is now way closer. It's now a 12 millipoint away from the best according to XG++ compared to in the situation now with the advanced anchor. So this is something really, I cannot recommend Michi's uh, backtracker strategy book uh, enough because uh, while you are valuable and very practical tips like that, uh, the book is full of it. So you should definitely get it. And it's uh, it's good for advanced player and it's also good for immediate player because the Michi style is so it makes it so easy for intermediates to uh, to understand the yeah his his explanations. Uh, I cannot uh, recommend it highly enough. Anyway, let's go back. So this is just a small thing. So 6-5 is running out. It's clear. 6-4 was also natural. Down and cover. 2-1. Yeah, what else should I do? It's not, not nice to have 6 on the mid. But yeah, everything else is out of question. 6-1 makes the Bar. I think there's not, not nothing else. Five two. Also clear. Stepping up is not a good idea if you are behind in the race and he's ready to attack and smash you. I'm not sure because I'm old. But did I start saying it may be a cube? This was my rubbish talking before my oversight with the double two because I was criticizing a little bit Nick that he was too cautious. So here according to plus, let's plus plus it, it was a small double of 23 milli points. And it gets even a little bit bigger. Okay, I think I called this one out. 
six two I was running out. That was good. Six one was hitting and advancing. Yeah. Six one. This is nice. Okay. I thought I thought about uh, just playing eight to two and giving up, but this would be would have been too much. But it was right. I was right. At least to four play. Uh, I have a pass here. Let's plus plus this, just to be sure. Yeah. So I was quite good at the estimation that this was a, a pass, and I found the better play, which gives me a take. Wow, I'm really happy with this. Just so nice if you uh, found the right stuff and hopefully for the right reasons but often enough it doesn't happen so i don't feel too bad about being happy about it if i do so in here this was a big double yeah okay so this one i'm also quite happy that i saw correctly that this is a double and i don't know if i would have found the pass but the good thing is the pass would have been only an error of uh, 33 milli points, so not a big deal if I would have passed. And it's oh, plus plus, it's absolutely borderline. Okay, but unfortunately, double double blunder for not doubling. And I don't think that Nick was playing for a gamma no? because of the two plots and everything is under control. I just have to hop out and things change. Huh? Anyway, we will see it in Nick's uh, video. Uh, what he was thinking, if he was thinking too good or not good enough. Okay, I danced, and then of course this is obviously this is um, way too good. 166, no surprise here, and no guessing what what uh, Nick was thinking here. Um, then six three for Nick. Okay, so more small stuff here, 18 to 9, he would run with the other checker. Don't think this is interesting enough to explore now here. 2-6 is clear, I can hit. And I found this pass, I'm happy with that. Yeah. So, uh, small pass, okay, cool. I know that there were times where I would I thought this was an easy take, huh? so even if this would be, have been a very small take, I would have uh, uh, touched this as an uh, improvement in my estimation, because I took positions like that way too too heavily and too deep. So I'm super happy, of course, with this estimation. And we go to game number two. So, 2 1, normal stuff. 5 4 hit and down is also normal. Dancing is also normal. Then 5 4. Wow, okay. I think this is a very reasonable play here. A human play, I would say. But making the anchor, of course, we know golden point, blah blah blah. But having two two towers here on the six and the eight point, I would never have found this. I think, yeah, and and uh, six being uh, leading uh, one zero in a seven point match, so six away seven away uh, is not where you want to play extra safe. Yeah, you can even double a little bit more aggressively because of the odd even considerations. I would not have found this play. Of course, gold is gold, blah blah blah, if you all see this. But this is quite a natural play, I think. But you have no structure here, you have structure. And here you have potential for structure, huh? maybe structure. But look at this, how this looks huh? with these towers. But you have killed opponents. Blitzing and priming chances, blah blah blah, we all know that, but I have to admit, I would not have found this play, so I'm here with with Nick. Let's 
because we have time, we can plus plus it. Just to get some extra fun out of it. Yeah, still a sizable error, but I think you might call it a human error. So, two, one. Yeah, slotting. Of course, slotting with, with, us, with the fifth man on the sixth point is easier, but yeah, you cannot. There's 10 checkers in the zone, so you are not too eager to, to split up high where he wants to attack. And uh, yeah, things like that. The 11 point is not worth that much that you pay the price of having three checkers on the 24. So this is, it looks super cool, but if you think about it, it's quite a normal play. Yeah? You have uh, four duplicated partially, so four, one, four, two, four, six. Uh, are already good rolls, so should not praise myself too much for that. So double five now it's getting a little bit dangerous. Yeah, I see. Uh, I'm super happy that I saw this alternative. Yeah, I know I praise myself sometimes too much. But it's really important because making the five point is kind of automatic, I would say. Yeah, and it's really important that you see here the alternative. Uh, and the four point is not only an alternative here. Now the thing is, if if you see the alternative and now you make the five point, I can absolutely live with that. And uh, it's all only 60 millipounds, blah, 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 everything is fine. But I would not be too happy if I saw this in the analyzing and I know I thought it was automatic yeah, when there was such a close alternative because this means you did not understand the really understand the position yeah. even though you got the right uh, decision but if you if you treat an almost uh, uh, equal candidate as a totally rubbish you did not have understood the position that's that's my thinking and it has a reason to analyze. So I'm quite happy that I saw the alternatives and can live, of course, with this small error. So Aces was a nice one for Mick. Then 5-1. Five, 5-1, one. Five, one. yeah, what else should I do? And this is another one I criticized. Huh? So Mick, Mick was in, somehow he was not in the in the match, I think. I don't think that he's uh, that he would normally overlook that, and he was playing so super fast. No, it's not about thinking and then deciding against it. No. And as you can see here, the error is here because it's almost too good. That's why the that's why the uh, error is relatively small with uh, fifty four millipoints. No? So that's another thing. No? It, I'm just guessing that Nick was th for him it was clear that he was playing for too good then everything is fine yeah but let's just imagine that you would not double because you would you thought it was uh, not good enough and then this is even though uh, XG punishes you with a 57 millipoint error it it's simply a, a bigger error huh? because you you were way more off than the the error here indicates so, but it was so super fast. And was it so clear for him that it's too good? With no checker on the bar and the gap and the sound structure. Anyway, we will see it when we watch uh, Nick's video, which will be up very soon on his channel. So maybe if I finish here in a few hours or days, uh, we can just continue and watch Nick's video. That would be nice. What else is the weekend good for? Okay, this I called out again. This, this now I prepared my my big blunder with the double two because I was so focused and so so surprised. So I guess that Nick is a better player uh, compared to me. I was so surprised that he was making errors that I found pretty easily, uh, so to say. So double sixes pass is coming. Yeah, this is huge huge pass. And to be honest, if he doubles this, it's pretty likely that he did guess it was not good enough before. It makes no sense to to play this on for a gammon 
and then double out this one or anyway let's continue with game three now the fun starts six two uh, normal play two one also normal hit and then play a checker from the midpoint if you have stripped your eight normal stuff four three hits back five three yeah this tempo hit yeah what should i say i don't know if i did say anything during the during the match but Yeah, it's, it reminds me of what, what, what Dirk was saying when after he came back, uh, after his long break, that one of his, his issues was that he was too afraid of coming under the, the gun. If you, if you go back to McGreal, uh, situations were, where the opponent had three attackers, like here on the uh, 6 point, 8 point and 11 point, if you go to the 5 point, this was called coming under the gun. Yeah? If you step to a point where you have three or more attackers. And this way you come under the gun no? and play safe. Uh, yeah, Easy to overlook and maybe has, Nick has this issue as well. That he's too much afraid and instead uses this tempo hit. No? Oh. Anyway, I don't know what I have would have done. 6-5 was a good one. I did hit. 4-1 makes the anchor. 6-5, yeah, I need structure, that's what I said, but at least I can cover two of my three plots, which is always nice, and the other one is only uh, vulnerable to indirect shots, two sevens and tens. So, 6-2 makes the four, 6-3 makes the five, finally I have structure, and I said, now I can, maybe I can double, but then, Nick did immediately strike back with this double sixes. It was not e so easy to play. There are three candidates, which seems to be pretty uh, even. Yeah, not not super interesting, I think. Important is that you have to step up to, to the 18 point, but that's not a surprise at all. And the rest is, yeah, this one is not a good idea. I think he had it on the board as well. Huh? Anyway, he found a very good play. And then my double aces, the anti-joker of the day. And then now, <laughs> I see it, I see it coming. You can't because of my stream layout, but it's coming now. This one. I just overlooked that I can remake my six point. What you are looking for is remake your six point. And how can you overlook it if you will double twos? What what is psychologically going going on or what is going wrong or wrong in your brain? So we can do it just for fun. I will undo it again, but just for fun. And I just want to feel a little bit better. I have removed the analyzing. And then I see my PR without it. So I would have played this three. That's good. But don't forget to analyze it again because we cannot just delete our blunders. We have to live with it and accept it, of course. But it's still interesting to find out what Ark Wegetan zeigt nur, dass ich ein Mensch bin. Shows that I'm a human. Yeah, of course I'm a human. But still, it, I would like to talk to someone who has some kind of experience in whatever it is, psychology or brain, brain science, whatever it is called, because there has to be a reason. Yeah? There, there was nothing that was, was distracting me. Yeah? I was totally in a complete calm room with no distractions except my own talking. Yeah? And I did not see that that the eight point is two points away from the six point, so it's absolutely not not uh, not explainable. No? But still, it happens, and it's not that it happens once in 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 one hundred years. Yeah? It happens every few months. I have something like that, and I don't know how many other people have 
errors like that or yeah complete oversight so. anyway uh, at least I realized it but that was not so good because then you got distracted because you cannot help but thinking about it what happened here so now I made it I made it and now make my six point again for two slotting and here I was doubling this was quite quite normal with 27 pips yeah, on the take yeah I think but it's still pretty high equity here it's almost a drop wow mm -hmm. yeah the problem is you cannot keep both huh? it looks a little bit better so you, you you more or less have just just a bar point game but the problem is uh, you cannot run so easily from the 21 if you need the timing so you are um, maybe sometimes you are worse off huh? because at least here now I have so many spares uh, I will not have to give <coughs> shots so soon which means you, you will get a timing issue yeah. and if you run from the from the anchor here not only that you give you more shots but then it's harder for the 21 you, and when you run from the 21 you are under, under attack here additionally so it's not so strong as it looks yeah. so there's a reason why double anchor games double high anchor games are not so so well and we all know that for example the five point and the set point as anchors are not really effective huh? <clears throat> anyway this was almost so the the take was here the the difficult part obviously the double is um, i think quite easy to find then double twos yes reduce contact of course because we are so far ahead in the race six two nothing special five four normal play Blick preparing to clear from the rear ah paul said i played five three two first and then made the 11 paint normal unstacking yeah i just did not ignore the plot completely i just thought i cannot do anything about this and then make the best of it and then the rest makes a lot of sense eh? except that it does not make sense at all but yeah. Yeah. So now three six super. I could clear three one. This is pretty sizable sizable mistake here. Yeah. I know that these positions are not so easy. They look so simple, and I have several Anki decks from Dirk which about this stuff so i'm i'm aware that this is not uh, super easy stuff no? here just just a simple prepare to clear from the rear and my idea was i hear my talking i have it still in my head that i want to make uh, the, the fourth uh, inside point that i'm able to attack but the thing simplest thing is that i don't want i don't have to attack i'm so, so far ahead in the race and I just want to clear and uh, I guess I will also win more gammons yeah 6.9 if I prepare to clear the 8 point if I make the crossovers you know, for the gammon race uh, but it's also winning more games so my game was not not good in any in any uh, point anyway so five two now of course i it was easy to prepare because there's no alternative so so making the inner void point was kind of a red herring huh? uh, some kind of distraction because otherwise i would have prepared to clear but i thought the, the fourth point was a good idea but it was just not necessary and of no special value because of my huge racing lead okay five two all in double six yeah stays back of course still far behind five one yeah this i avoided the normal play again this technical stuff huh? and it's still a pretty sizable error here my play six to five 
I wanted to make double sixes good and not my worst roll or bad roll. Anyway, it's not so super interesting. Maybe I look at it later. This technical stuff is quite quite boring stuff. So 5 2, yeah, I was lucky. Double ace, uh, 6 2. Three one is better than whatever. It's not too too super doesn't two milli points. Let's see, I, I think I got a similar decision on the next time. No here. I was just preparing to be even on my two highest points. Five four clear from the rear, easy stuff. Stuff two one two off also easy three two. It's better to play five to three than three to one. There is a reason because you you get rid of the 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 gap on the four point earlier. I think I think that's the reason. But it's not a big deal. But anyway, you should learn to play the simple stuff correct. So three, two, another one. Here I learned it. Of course, here it's more obvious that I don't play three, two, one, no? because I have already four checkers. Maybe it's way easier to find. That's the reason why I found it here. But basically, it's the same idea. Prepare to get rid of the the gap on the four point. And here still, it's better the other way. Oh, I have to. If I have too much time, I will study this. I guess there are some simple tactical reasons, but seven millipoints, there are more things, more important things to to study. Okay, that's it for game three. And we still have a few more games. So six, four, makes this five, five away, five away, makes it two points. Standard play, which is slightly best. And I have to, that's, that's what I mentioned, I have to, I have to copy here. The first roll is complete or more or less wash the three, uh, splitting, running or making the two point. And here there's no choice. All others are more or less blunders on other options. Four, three, place two down. Yeah, difficult decision. Huh? Both has, have blitzing positions. Normally you don't split, but you have your a blitzing position on your own, and that's why the plays are getting close again. Normally you play two down when your opponent has made the two point, but here you have your made your two point on your own, which changes things quite a bit, I think. So it's unclear what's best here. And as often, yeah, the the arguments just cancel each other out, and it's, it remains a, a close decision here. Okay, 6-2 hitting was easy peasy, 5-2 up and safe, I think was easy as well, then 6-4, what else should I do? I have to play safe, no reason to to go crazy, 3-1 makes the 5-5-2 five. Five, down and stepping up, yeah, always good idea, especially if you are ahead in the race to prepare your exit now you can exit with fours and sixes when you stay back only with sixes and the risk to get attacked on the three point is relatively mild so 13 six would be a huge or oh, huge it would be a blunder understandably so two one attacks pretty clear what else should you do hit and out is also easy five and four in and hit for one yeah this is this is what i said huh? uh, it's hard to find for humans but this is really thematic that, that if you are far ahead in the race and you have only one tracker back of the ugly place yeah? and here six two it's really hard to play six two huh? for me but still the same theme you cannot go too wrong but of course the other thing is if you if you make an error here you feel much better if it's a nice looking play like that. Uh, if if I would have made this play and XG would have told me it's a, an error or a blunder, 
I would feel more bad, yeah. But this is just uh, psychological and emo emo emotional stuff, and yeah, you should, if you trust XG, and I think in positions like that you can trust XG, then you should, you you better try to accept that sometimes ugliness is necessary, and uh, yeah, and as you know, I was aware that it could be, but uh, yeah, it was just too much for me here to play to play here uh, six two i can live with that but still yeah be aware that ugliness in this kind of positions is often often called for so aces splits three two yeah what else it's not a nice entering point here 23 but otherwise i have no good twos 3 1 also quite normal, I think. 4 1 running. Yeah. So most of the time it's just right to run, even though you, you enter a double or sometimes even a triple shot. Yeah. Uh, instead of waiting for a better roll, which is not so likely, a 5 end, even though there are less hitters then, but it's, yeah. And here he has to give up the anchor. So you can just check a little bit. One plus plus, but usually running is a good idea if you have only one man back and you're far ahead in the race, even so. But here she finds another play, preparing to run, yeah, stepping up here. Uh, it's not the best point for him to attack. And then the six to two is now with the sixth man on the on the six is a little bit uh, yeah, it's not so super ugly, yeah, because it helps a little bit, because the six, six checkers on the six point are very ugly already. Of course, I did not think about this, and I just made this play for general reasons. Not, not too bad. So, six, one, hits, five, three, in and down. Hitting, of course, would be, yeah, I don't have the reason to protect my blood. It's not not in too much danger so i don't need a tempo hit so why risk to lose the racing lead six four yeah, it's why not pretty clear i think um, six four in and out there uh, getting some hope i'm ahead of the race and i escaped but then double five bang bang okay it's not too important hit and as in the last only the last five is interesting but technical stuff not too interesting i think and then he doubled and it was a clear drop which i guessed it was almost not so far not too far away from being too good even yeah but i think even reiner on bad days would not have taken that so, third to last game, 6-2 standard play, 5-3 standard as well. Pretty interesting that here 5, the split is so close here. That's surprising. Anyway, 6-2 making 2 points, very nice, 6-1 clear as well 6-5 double hit also quite clear 3-2 entering 2 is fast double 3 two. why not why not build your board and hit oh. no. pretty clear aces and then um, Double and another clear drop. I'm happy that I found this. Yeah, because these kind of positions are easy to easy to, to mess up because in a way you are right when you think this may be a take because you really win a lot. Yeah? As you can see here I win 32% of the games. But what's the issue here is that almost 40% gammon, so that's that's huge. And of course the score makes a huge difference. We can just check this. It will stay a, a, a drop, uh, but um, let's just for the fun of it 
uh, analyze the neutral match score and then the reverse score. You will see, I think, quite a big difference. So you see here on the on the left side we have the original decision, where it's a 500 millipoint error to to take, and at a neutral score it's a 144. Again, you can say who cares? Pass is pass, yeah. But it's very important. Um, oh, I have not plus plused here. What a huge error here, the original. How how could happen this? So you see the big difference, uh, and that's important to study this kind of stuff, not just to ignore it because it's no difference. It is a difference, even though the the end result is the same here. But it's important to understand positions like that and to make better decisions in similar uh, situations or variations. So, and this is because we the opponent is four away and we are five away, this, this, which means our take point is quite high, so he can win the, the match with, uh, with a gammon. And let's now, just for the fun of it, change the score that uh, the doubler would have been five away. And then we can take more. It may be even turn into a take. It should be very close, I think. Let's analyze it. Uh, what have I done? Four, five. Okay. It's still... Oh, I... I... I uh, it's a big difference, but way, way smaller than I thought. Okay, it was 580 away, sure. But you see that uh, if the leader doubles, you know, the pass for the for the match trailer is bigger than if the trailer would double. You know? Of course, the end result is the same, but you see how different the score five away, f four away, and four away, five away is. In regards to doubling, especially if there are gammons involved. Anyway, so let's go to the second to last game. 3 1 good start, 5 1 split, basic stuff, 6 1 makes the 2, looks like I can double soon, and then bam, double 3. Super nice, and that down and make the best point. And here I, I did it wrong. Uh, well, the thing is that I'm I have the issue, the general ten tendency that I'm I'm not making any pure plays, hitting on the ace point often enough. And at the moment I, I'm aware of that, and this is a case where I more or less just overdid it or, or simply was not thinking enough and then when in doubt go against your tendencies which basically is a very good attitude and approach um, yeah but here here I overdid it and even even splitting and hitting loose is better okay yeah, the, the problem is that I'm, I'm, I'm more in, even though I have the two point more in a, in a priming position than the opponent maybe, and the opponent more has a blitzing position because of his stack on the six point, so splitting is not so super attractive. A because I'm not so not, not really ahead in the race, and B because the opponent has a blitzing position, which means getting attacked is more likely and getting primed which is a drawback if you or the risk when you stay back is not so likely so uh, just make a more pure play here some kind of middle play yeah? protecting a uh, half tempo hit tough uh, but it's still kind of kind of pure but it's hard to find anyway because it's hard to find pure plays when you already have to have the two point mate so um, anyway, sizable error. 3 2. Uh, pretty clear. 3 2. Oh, there is an alternative, just making the 8 point. That's interesting. Well, that's what I meant. Uh, I'm happy that I found a good move, no matter if it's now the best or the second best. But uh, if I do, did not see a, a clear alternative, 
Well, even if 13.8 would have been a 15 millipoint error, if I did not mention it, then I have not understood the position. Uh, good enough, you know, if I think this is out of the question. You know, I don't know if you, if you get me, if it makes sense for you, but I'm pretty convinced that it makes a lot of sense. But that's part of the reason why I'm, I'm sometimes analyzing positions like that where uh, almost anybody else says, who cares about three millipoints? It's not about the three millipoints. It's, it's about why is this other move so strong and why didn't I see it as candidate? Not because I want to, don't want to accept the three millipoints, because I want to understand the position completely. Well, yeah. That I at least understand the, the, the moves that are on top. And if there's another candidate that's very close, I want to understand why it's so close. The picture is not moving. Who says so? It should move. Try refreshing your, your browser. So the stream, I see the same picture as I have here, the three two still. It should be, and we have, the stream is running well from the statistics. I would guess it's on your, the issue may be on your side. Ah, my picture is not moving. My, my pretty face, the camera hang up, okay, let me, let me unplug it and plug it again and hope it will. My lovely, my lovely face is not moving. So let's see. No, it did not work. I can try something. I hope it will not mess up. No, I will not try this. I better accept that the camera is not updating here. But you can still hear me, right? You can still hear me. You can see the position changing. No, no, Wolfgang, I take it back. It's, I saw now. I, I thought you meant the whole picture is not moving, but the XG picture is moving. It's just my the camera is not moving. Uh, give me a few seconds. I will just try to fix it maybe by activating and deactivating, but the camera is not showing up. Okay. Six six play was terrible. There were some terrible things here, yes. Let me just briefly check if I can fix the camera if it does not work oh well we have to live with my frozen face uh, i'm not looking too bad in this picture i think it could be worse it could be worse let me just deactivate and activate ah this worked like a charm Yes, I look nice. Thanks, Wolfgang. That's what I wanted to hear. And we are back to normal stuff, ready for a few more hours of awesome streaming. So this was the uh, double aces. Yeah. Okay. Let's just continue. I would say it's uh, more or less. I think quite difficult play. So three, two enters and saves. Fine. Three, two, yeah. Ah, here we have this uh, 13, eight. Yeah, that's what we, where we stopped last time. Yeah, I think it's important that you see alternatives. So I think it's no alternative to make the anchor an eight to five. Then you have not understand the position completely. No matter if it's a top play or not. If, if you did not realize there is a close candidate or alternative and 13 to 8 is here a good alternative making of course the good point here we are not so far ahead but anyway i thought we are not priming because the two checkers on my ace point and uh, i was a little bit worried to be honest uh, with my opponent's blitzing position with these 10 checkers in the zone and even so after double four type of position it's more priming than blitzing blah 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 anyway 
I did not see it. But luckily it was not a big issue. So double six, double six, we see now. Yeah, pretty clear. I'm ahead in the race. I try to reduce contact as much as possible. It makes no sense at all to make the bar point. The 10 point is perfect, perfect here because it's not in direct range with the anchor but it's in direct range with a very valuable point not the not the eight not the seven but the four point which would make my life way easier to bring my man uh, home safely so the 10 point in a sense is the perfect point to make in the outfield in this situation so six three slots of four he would prefer to make the two just get ready for some fly shots yeah i can see that and maybe they are somewhere I have to leave a shot already. Is there something? 6-4? Six, 6-4 four. Six, four, for example. No? Always look for tactics. So you don't have... You should make your board strong now. You are not... Oh, that's why this is a sizable ever for a place like 6-4 where I have to leave a shot. And maybe there are some more where I can volunteer when there are two plots in the home board instead of a three-point board. So 5-4 was easy to slot. 5-5 five, five also relatively clear, I think, to one. Now, now my two ones are coming. Oh, was it that? Yeah, where well, I was always arguing I have to decide between uh, improving my home board and uh, or improve my flexibility in the outside in a close race. And we saw or, or we see it's all super close. The arguments even each other out or cancel each other out more or less. Okay. That's all also nice, yeah, if you struggle with the place and later on you see that it was close. Then, then you are really, you are really spot on. If you thought it was super close and then make the right decision, and the other one you thought was super close was a blunder, then you were not so good. Even though, in both ways, you are have the same PR, so to speak. Okay, let's continue. 4-2 makes a super strong board. Some technical stuff not so important for now. 2-1, same thing. Now 10-7 is better. Okay, whatever that means. This technical stuff. And then people say holding games are boring and checker play are easy. I don't know. I think everything is can be complicated if, depending how you look on it or at it. So it's an error, 20 millipoids, 13, 10, and the other place, 10, 7, or making the border better. Interesting. Not super interesting, but interesting. So deuces, or oh, I should stay back and not make any, what is that, did I overlook this? No. No, no, I, I thought if I want to keep contact, I have to weaken my board in a way. Did I not really? Let me check, put it on the board, the best play. Uh, it's it's kind of clear we are down in the race. We are five down in the race, we rolled eight, which means we are three ahead, opponent and roll, which is worth four pips. So technically we are one pip behind, we want to more or less maximize contact, but I thought it is so ugly. But how, how do the place look, the ugly place? Yeah, this is my... Yeah. Okay, how much is the contact worth if you have to break up your board? That was hard to see for me. Yeah. Especially this play. This I can understand that we may fix it. We still have a four-point board. But this play with three plots, how can this be better? I'm not doubting XG, but I'm just saying that it's hard for me as a human or average player to to uh, see that. So. so I was right that this is uh, more contact, but I overjudged here the weakness, you know, the problems that, that occurred due through weakening. Well, so it was just simple. 
maximize contact when you're behind in the race. But this one was uh, really hard for me to play so ugly and weaken my board. So there's always so many things to learn and to think about. Huh? So 6-4. Another one I thought was clear, but it was not. Not only that it's not the best move according to 4-ply and also now not according to plus plus. But I thought it was clear that I clear here because I'm ahead. Uh, and here if things go wrong. Yeah, if, if I play something like 5-2 after this move, which looks like that. It's horrible. I don't want to leave a shot. I have to play 6-2-1. And after my play, I can play anything. Of course, it's a uh, double pre that plays way better now for my opponent. But still hard for me, even if I see the numbers now, not to like my play. Even so, I agree that XG most likely on plus plus is just kind of a truncated, not kind of, it's a truncated rollout after seven, seven rolls. Uh, I'm pretty sure that he estimates this right. Anyway. 6 1 easy, 4 1 to crossovers. Why not? Double 4 cause a good roll. 4 5 4 2 nothing special. 6 2 he likes to play 6 4 instead of 4 2 after and playing the 6. Okay, not a big thing. Double 6, double 5. And again, I thought doubling is strong here with three peeps ahead and I have this huge problem that then uh, gaps are not, not all gaps are equal. Huh? So the, the, it depends on two things, the five point gap, how many checkers are behind, which means how long uh, will this be an issue for me? How, how long will this gap stay? And the more checkers I have on the sixth, the more bad is it because it takes longer to get rid of it. And the second thing is how many checkers do I already have on the ace point? Because I have to place fives. I have to play fives, six to one. Yeah. And each checker on the ace point that is already there makes this gap on the five point even worse. Yeah. And that's why this is so, again, I'm really happy because I'm not a, an expert in, in, in bear of situations, but I'm really happy that I got this one right. And, uh, so this may be a good good cube and uh, I hope I would have found the take. Yeah? But the big risk is I may have even talked myself into a, and, uh, into, a, into a pass. I don't know. At least I'm pretty sure that I would have found the double, which I'm quite happy with. So double four. Three, two, five, four. Ah, now I know what's coming. This QB cube. Good that I found the pass here. We'll go. Ooh, it would have been 369. It took me quite a while to get this right. Uh, yeah, huge chaos if this is. Yeah, but the problem is even if I get into a three versus three roll. Mitch, Nick still have a chance to avoid three roll versus uh, four roll versus four roll. I have the issue that I have. I need the doubles the most, and I have one double less to catch up. Yeah, because double aces don't really save a full roll. Yeah. Yeah, I take three checkers off, but then I still have uh, two rolls where I don't have can roll an ace. So it's not really a, a catch up, a full powerful uh, double. And the issue is that maybe he will, he will not miss. Uh, if you place two high uh, die and it's gone immediately, or one high and a low and a one and a two, and the next time no three. So you have pretty good chances that he, he, he bears off in three. And then I'm, I'm hopeless. Huh? And it's three against four. Yeah. There's uh, three or four percent. Huh? 
Okay, good. I'm pretty happy that I found this. In bad days, I would mess this up, I feel. So last game, bear with me. I see. I'm. I'm usually I'm doing this until the last viewer has gone, and now I'm we are down to four viewers. So that's perfect stream for me. So that we finish with the last then last viewer, we will switch off the lights. So double five, two one, splitting would be a horror. Slotting is fine. Aces. Good one, three one, prime. So here I can split. That's difficult for me to find here. The split because I have such a not nice stru priming structure, and I'm behind. I was pretty sure that my move was right, but here I was off. Getting closer, but for me this was hard to find. That splitting is correct here. So three five was super nice to run. Six two is running. Okay, XG has a completely different opinion here. He wants to play hitting because here stepping out is giving the opponent too much. But at least it created a false double by me. Huh? I don't know. Okay, this is not an easy one, that's for sure. But giving up your prime and attacking instead of uh, running out, even though it is quite sure that I almost all numbers hit, not all, but very many. Yeah, oh, pretty sure. But I would have messed this up also, and then you have a double blunder. Wow. Now this is what makes big gammon so difficult, huh? that you here yeah, you are in priming and all of a sudden you must you must blitz or attack because the alternatives are worse. But he provoked a bad double by me. I was pretty convinced that this was light even at this score. At least no blunder, maybe maybe plus plus makes it a blunder. No, it's getting even close. I can live with that. The thing is that high volatile in high volatile positions it's very easy to miss doubles because uh, yeah the equity is not so high, which means your opponent wins quite a lot of games and then the position may not look so strong as it really is, or at least uh, in terms of uh, how close we are to a double. So I'm super happy that I found in a volatile position, even though it's a no double and even though it's a super clear take, so no no extra practical value that you can hope for for a pass. I would never have thought that Nick would pass this. But still, this is 45 millipoint is... Uh, I'm super happy that I, I estimated that, that it's very close. Now it's a close no double, but that's fine for me. If, if you want to find close doubles, you have to accept that they sometimes will double close no doubles. If it's not going to getting worse, super. Of course, sometimes it's getting worse. So now I'm hitting and making the 10. Now this is no there's no alternative for one entering. Wow. Okay, playing pure and, and leaving a shot on the midpoint, not an easy one as well for, for Nick here. I doubt that I would have found this one. 2-1 is a very nice roll. 6-3 is even nicer, I have to admit. 6-4, yeah, then here I have to hit. Okay, this was just... Uh, there yeah, I have to admit this is just too difficult for me. Uh, it was just guessing. I saw the uh, good thing is I saw a two. That's fine. I saw it as a candidate, and then I judged against it. That's all. Oh. You have to accept that that you have weak points that are not not oversights or that are just you are not able to handle yet. 
Double three, six, four is a little bit ugly here, but it's the best I could do. You know, slotting wild. But there is an alternative again, this hitting, you know? but I was not... I was not... Uh, yeah, judging this position in a way that hitting loose here is good. I did not do it uh, the world before. And here I can play relatively safe without direct shots with this one yeah but anyway it was not a big deal here so five to nine to two running that's not so easy to find of course i cannot lose gammons and i know that uh, if your opponent has a temporarily weakness like two plots in his home board you have to look for to, exp to exploit this, to, for ways to exploit this. Uh, well, you can run, but I'm slightly yet, and wow, okay. Not an easy one to find this, this running play here because of these two plots. Okay, 5-4. We, he makes the board, 3-2. Makes my board as well, simple, 6-1, easy, just a waiting game, who has to give a shot and who hits first will win the game, or who rolls the first big double. 5-3 is a good one, no shots, or only 4-6 as a sh fly shot, and create a spare here, double 4, of course, was good for Nick, 4-2, yeah, nothing special, 5-2, oh, ah, double 4 here. He was wondering how to play all oh, this but we have been a big mistake huh? this was at the board it was not not so easy to see that i agreed with mick with the play but he struggled struggled a little bit as well uh four two down five two it's also relatively clear six five make the point and slots no real alternative. 5-2 also waiting. 5-1. Because of the score I could jump out. Of course I did not see that. And duplicate or triplicate force. So that's that the idea basically. Force are hitting, force are hitting here and force are covering. But being behind in the race. Yeah, four pips after the roll. Jumping out here, yes, it's uh, gammons are of no value, but boah, that's for the real good ones or for the bots. I was far away from seeing it, even, ah, plus plus made it, but again, it's important to realize why these plays are good for tactical reasons. Yeah. Um, you get uh, direct shots, for example, if the opponent rolls something like 6 1 or so, so in positions where gammons your gammon losses do not count you have to look out for positions like that and check if you have enough time left you have to check the the tactics okay five one we are coming to an to an end can keep my board that's good six five six four is more or less forced five one again uh, not so easy decision over the board if you hit or if you try to play safe and uh, hats off uh, well played i'm pretty sure that i would not have found this play or, or i had the guts to play this huh? because i thought aces and then i have 10 pips here to roll a six so the aces really hurt and i'm i'm still ahead here I don't hit seven pips plus five, 12 pips ahead, that's quite comfortable, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, of course the alternative is 8-3, yeah, not a big deal, but uh, yeah, very nice move found by Nick. 8-3 is nice, not an A6, but a, a small, relatively small ace, uh, which means I have a little bit timing left to roll a six but unfortunately i was not able to make it but it gets a little bit interesting so 
also interesting that here I have that I still have a thirty-three percent after after White's six five. Kinda interesting. Um, which means normally you have a take. Okay. Anyway, double two is not so well. Now hitting is clear for three dancing six, and I hit. But now the hit with three one is bad one, because I have to break my nice board. And still I have twenty five percent here after this roll. Interesting, no? These kind of percentages. Four three super nice, but misplayed the double hit. It's uh, almost a blunder. Easy, easy to, to not so easy to avoid this blunder. I think. Uh, okay, I don't know what I have would have done. Maybe the same. Five two dancers, blah blah. Suck and hit again. Double aces comes in with two which is good but then has to break the board and still you have 20 percent i think this number sometimes really interesting would you guess that after after the aces that i have 20 does it that i win one in five games it looks less or huh? two checkers here and the opponent two out and only two point board opponents four point board i would have guessed way less percentages than 20. So 6, 5, 5, 1, easy peasy, 5, 2, 6, 5, yeah, it's way better than stepping out to direct, more or less direct shots. 6, 3, also clear, and then I got hit. What is not after 6, 3, I have to, to uh, 27%. Okay. 6 3 hits me, dances 5 1, 5 4 dances again, 5 1 hits correctly, dance 4 1, now lights lights go out, the split is yeah, fine, uh, the slot 3 2 3. 3, 2 again, 6 is, and I think there was nothing special except that I did hit again. And even this position, 5% left after the hit, and still one on the bar. Double sixes, that's so easy to mess up here. Uh -oh, I had not so much time left, I think. That's a good excuse, I don't know if it's a good excuse. Yeah, the standard stuff. Uh, try to stay away 12 pips, which is now 14, which is standard containment stuff, and try to avoid direct hits, direct hits. And for whatever reason, I looked for exceptions. No, no not not close to the perfect 12 away in containment, and I giving here direct shots, which is makes this life coming home easier easier when you can hit especially with this four point board. So it was quite, according to my, to my standard rules for containment, it was quite easy to avoid this mistake as well. Unfortunately, I didn't. It's, sometimes you just try to be super clever and then look like an idiot. Anyway, we will learn from that. And then I think it's really that was it. Okay, even though we have 10 US left, I think we will wrap it up after how many hours? Oh, not even three hours today. That's, that's not good. But good news, we have, uh, we have another stream next week on Thursday where I will have a very special guest here in my show, uh, Tobias Helwag from Germany, super, super strong player. He has just won several big tournaments in a row. 
And there's a special reason for this stream. Not only that Tobias is a super nice guy and I, I'm super happy to have him as a guest on my show, but uh, part of the reason or main reason uh, for his appearance is that we want to showcase him here as a um, commentator because he will be the main commentator at the first Begammon Festival in Aachen in August this year, 10th to 16th, 16th of August in Aachen, a full week of Begammon. And uh, yeah, we will showcase different uh, participants or supporters of this tournament and Tobias Halbach will be commentating uh, the matches there and we'll have, we will be get supported by uh, several other players like for example Dirk Schiemann or other special guests. And yeah, we will on Thursday we will play see a match, uh, a friendly match between Markus Reinhardt and uh, Thorsten Lux and Tobias will excel here and shine and uh, with his commentating skills and give you a, a good preview what you can expect to happen in August where he will do the, do the live stream commentating of this awesome uh, festival in Aachen where we have the first uh, doubles uh, champion world championship and an open tournament uh, yeah many great players will be there it will be for me it will be uh, a part of uh, Stockholm it will be the event of the year that's for sure and yeah so I think it will be uh, six o'clock uh, central European time and the stream will also be in English. We had a first stream regarding the festival in German and this will be the first stream regarding uh, the Begem Festival Aachen that will be in English. So see you guys all on on uh, next Thursday and uh, yeah don't forget to enjoy your life life now. It will not get any better most likely so have fun, be nice and enjoy your life as much as you can. So, see you. Bye-bye.